I'm DJ Alex, and this is your Hunky Vape 5 on Friday Vaping News Science and Advocacy Report for the 16th of April, 2021. In the news this week, we start off with Oregon, the first state to decriminalize possession of drugs, is now getting ready to prohibit remote sales of inhalant delivery systems, a.k.a. ENDS products a.k.a. a vape device. This is going to limit vapors to only buy products in person from local stores. So if you don't have a local store, you're kind of forced to go back to combustible tobacco, which is still going to be available in every convenience store and every gas station known to mankind. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, Oregon House Bill 2262 passed 43 to 4, with 12 members choosing not to vote. And this has moved on to their Senate. Let me point out how preposterous this is, okay? In Oregon, the police can pull you over for a busted traffic light, tail light, or for whatever reason, okay? And if you give them permission to search your car and they find you in possession of heroin or meth or LSD or oxycodone, oxycontin, weed, cocaine, and countless other drugs, they're not allowed to arrest you. But if this bill passes and you choose to buy an inhalant delivery product online, well, the state can bring civil action against you and take the cost of your purchase away from the person that sold it to you. And they can charge you for whatever it costs them to investigate it and prosecute the guilty for the sale. And they can fine you up to $5,000. Have a nice day. What a load of crap. But... We need to make sure that these products don't get to anybody under the age of 21. So we're going to punish all the adults and force them to either buy in the local store or be shit out of luck. Moving on. In Indiana, remember last week in Indiana, we were talking about their Senate refused to add any additional tax on combustible tobacco, but they had no problem adding a 10% final price tax on tobacco harm reduction products. Well, now, everybody's upset over this. Vape tax advocates say that they wanted 15% or 20 or 50. And critics are complaining that the tax is too confusing and described it as a measly one-tenth of a cigarette tax. And lawmakers, they're the most idiotic of all of them. They're saying that the vaping tax would show kids that it's dangerous to have a parity with tobacco. What the hell does that even mean? A parity with tobacco is dangerous and that's going to have any kind of impact on kids? At least the article got one thing correct. This tax will have no impact on kids, but it will disenfranchise the 60% of Indiana tobacco users who are already lower-income citizens struggling to survive. When will these politicians learn that these taxes disproportionately affect communities of color and lower-income members of society? Or maybe, just maybe, these assholes know that this is just another chain to keep these people where they are in society. Regardless, in Idaho, their Senate just voted down Senate Bill 1087, which was the Tobacco 21 Legal Enforcement Bill. And now the American Lung Association is calling Idaho a teen vaping sanctuary state. By the way, this is all being credited to the Idaho Freedom Foundation for shoveling money into the Idaho House Republicans who broke with former President Trump 
and stuck their thumb up their nose to unfunded federal mandates, which limit life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. But because they didn't go along with the federal guidelines and they didn't change their laws, well, that means that the police in that state don't have to enforce the federal laws because their duty is to enforce state laws. So whatever their state laws are, 16, 18, 19, whatever, that's what the legal age to buy something in Idaho now is, apparently. News to me. Because, see, federal laws only apply and can be enforced when people cross state lines. So, being that Idaho says we're not going to enforce Tobacco 21, I guess if you're 19 years old, you can break the federal law in Idaho and go to a vape store and go to a convenience store and buy tobacco products, even though you're underage. Because I guess Idaho decided that they don't need to change the law. News to me. Well, let's move on to international news. Okay. Starting with a Melbourne, Florida-based Biddy Vapor company. We talked about them back when PMTAs were a big thing on the news. Okay. Well, they successfully completed the UK and EU regulatory process and decided to enter seven additional international markets, bringing the total to 11 countries now. Cavale Brands, a company that most of us vapors don't know anything about, never heard of, and we've never seen one of their bitty sticks, well, they're now going to be selling in Spain, France, Italy, Germany, Austria, the Netherlands, the Czech Republic, as well as they've already been selling in Australia, New Zealand, Russia, and the UK. And they're moving forward. They're looking forward to the actual first international trade show that they're going to attend. And that's Voxpo. It's going to be from the 28th to the 30th of April. And naturally, you know, staying true to the global pandemic fashion, the expo is completely online. It's at voxpo.vfairs.com. If you want to check it out and you don't stick around for the rest of the news. Next, let's take a look at Estonia. It's a little tiny country bordering Latvia, Russia, Finland, and Sweden in the uh, northeast corner of the European Union. Well, we have Estonian Member of Parliament Tarmo Kruzme of the center-right Izama Party well, he was caught chilling in bed with a vape and music when it was his turn to ask questions during the recent parliamentary debate. Oops. Guess this guy's true roots of being a punk rock band artist were proudly showing when the camera automatically switched to him during the Zoom-based parliamentary debate. Whoops. Let's move on. Taiwan could be the next country to ban electronic nicotine delivery systems. Yep. According to the back of reporter in the China Post, the Taipei City Government Department of Health has drawn up draft amendments to prohibit the manufacture, import, supply, display, sale, and advertising of novel tobacco and vaping devices. Violators are going to face fines between 10000 and 50000 Taiwan dollars. And unlike the rest of the world, blaming this prohibitionist agenda on the kids? Well, over in Taiwan, they're blaming it on the black market, where apparently electronic cigarettes contain amphetamines, marijuana, and other drugs. And a couple of them admitted that there's also a concern about ends exploding. Yeah? How about we move on to exploding ends regulations in New Zealand? Once again, the Aotearoa Vapors Community Advocacy is calling out the hypocrisy of the New Zealand government's proposal 
for a smoke-free Aerotera 2025 action plan. Simply acknowledging vaping, but failing to support it as a key factor to achieve a smoke-free nation will doom the government's action plan to total and utter failure. The safer harm reduction products must not be limited to specialist vape stores and must be allowed for sale at any retail establishment that sells deadly combustible tobacco. I mean, seriously, how can a harm reduction product compete when the harmful products are available everywhere? You were serious about that? Especially when they decided, oh, well, we're not going to totally ban it everywhere. We're going to leave the safer alternative for sale everywhere, as long as it's limited to three flavors. So it competes with the three tobacco flavors that are for sale. It's not right. If you want other flavors, you're going to have to go to a specialized vape store. What happens if you don't have one? Common sense, people. Flavors are what saves people's lives. And demonizing nicotine when combustion is the problem means that the government is complacent in smoking-related deaths. Hello? And by the way, the Aotera Vape Community Advocacy Group is this week's highlighted advocacy organization. And lastly, I want to draw your attention to the upcoming 2021 World Vape Day. And their slogan this year is, Go the Extra Mile. And I know, May 30th is over a month away, but why put off getting the word out? The aim of World Vape Day is to raise awareness of electronic cigarettes as a harm reduction tool to empower smokers to give up their combustible tobacco habit. Ain't nothing to it but to get into it. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is our first article for today. Oregon, the first state that decriminalized possession of drugs. Yeah. Well, they decided that we're not going to ban it altogether. We're just going to ban the sale of it anywhere except your local store. Kind of like what they're doing over in New Zealand. Is this a coordinated effort? Is there somebody pulling the strings behind the curtains and enacting these laws that are almost identical no matter where you look? There's an agenda at play here, isn't it? <laughs> well, Oregon House passes bill to ban online vape sales. You thought it was bad that the federal government prohibited the shipping of these products and UPS and FedEx and DHL all joined in online. This whole thing is insane. March and step. Perfect. Yeah. Well, now Oregon says that's not enough. We need to ban any remote sales of these products. You must physically go into a store, provide your government issued ID which now needs to be duplicated and checked by a third-party system that everybody must have. wonder what the subscription fee for that third-party system is going to be. wonder who's making money on that end of the deal. Now do you understand? Can't do it online, though, and have somebody show up at your door to check it. It has to be done in person because this is really going to stop the kids. And I mean it. This is going to stop the kids this time. What are they going to do next when they find out this doesn't work? Well, I'm very pessimistic. I'm especially fired up this week. Anyway. Oregon House passes bill to ban online vape sales. House Bill 2261 was introduced January 11th, 2021. And, um... April 9th, had its third reading and passed in the House. So now it's moving on to their Senate. 
They had their first reading on the 12th, and on the 15th, it was referred to their health care. And here's how the votes went down in the House. 43 members voted yes. And I don't want to hear anybody arguing, saying that, oh, this is, this is definitely a Democrat thing. It's the Democrats that are out to ban vaping. Look at all the Republicans on this list that signed it. This is definitely bipartisan action going on here. 43 people voted yes. We're going to ban the sale of this to everywhere except the local store. Four people voted no. And 12 people says, I'm not voting on this one, dude, because I don't want to get nailed on this. I vote I vote one way or I vote the other way. I'm going to lose votes no matter what I do. So I'm just not going to vote. What the hell kind of horse shit is this? These people are getting paid to not do their job. I've sat here trying to think of something pleasant to say after that, and I can't. What angers me the most about this? Go to Kassar's website. You, you would expect to see some kind of notification of this, even if there wasn't a call to action, right? There is nothing on the radar about Oregon. Meanwhile, House Bill 2261 has already passed. Now it's in the Senate. And let me tell you, this is going to be wonderful. If they catch somebody, let's say that you uh, have a store in Alaska, okay? And let's say that you are looking at this like, I don't care, man. I live in Alaska. What are they going to do? How are they going to come after me? I'm going to let people in Oregon buy this stuff. All right. Well, let me tell you, the attorney general in Oregon is going to investigate this and they are going to file a class action or a civil lawsuit against company or companies that continue to sell to Oregonians because we need to protect Oregonians. In the name of the kids. Because the whole purpose of this is to protect the kids. But the law doesn't apply to just kids. It applies to everybody. Everybody now has to go in person into a store to get your vape stuff. Yeah. Especially in the days of COVID, this is utterly ridiculous. Because let's say you have a local vape store. You're one of the lucky bastards, okay? Okay. You have a local vape store and you call them up and say, hey, man, I need some coils from my tank and I need a couple bottles of this juice. You got it? Oh, yeah, we got it. All right, here's my credit card information. You know, here's my driver's license number. I'm going to um, do a curbside pickup. Nope, not allowed. Not according to this bill. According to this bill, you must physically go inside the store so that they can use your government issued ID to run through a third party age verification system wonder who's making money off of that. Uh-huh. Running through a third-party age verification system to verify that, you know, somebody like me is not underage. Come on, fuckos, let's go for a ride. But that's where the state is in Oregon. This whole thing is insane. Let's move on. How about last week we talked about this? The Indiana General, Le General Assembly decided that they're not going to tax combustible tobacco, they were going to raise the price $2 originally, but then it dropped to $1.50 per pack before they dropped it all together with the argument saying, oh, we'll save that tax increase for when we really need the money. So right now we're just going to add a vape tax, 10% vape tax. And it's either going to be 10 cents per pod, per milliliter of pod, or 10% of the final sale price. You would think that that would be just a simple, okay. Vapors would be like, oh, well, it's better than Pennsylvania. You got 40% there and better than some of these other places where it's like 90%. Yeah, well, nobody's happy about this. And I mean, nobody is happy about this. We've got tax advocates that are saying, oh, it should be 15% of retail price. That's only going to be $1.50 per two-pod pack. Really? Why do they always present these examples as the best-case scenario? Because if they apply the $0.10 cent per tax, per milliliter tax, to 120 mil bottles, that's a hell of a lot more than $1.50. And if they apply it as a 10% final price, to this, 
that's still a hell of a lot more than $1.50. But they're not going to tell you that because the author of this article obviously has their own agenda. Big surprise. And they say that this proposed cigarette tax, even though they're not taxing cigarettes any more than they already are, this is all tobacco harm reduction product taxes, is only going to bring in $150 million in tax revenue towards Medicaid, while the 10% retail tax on electronic cigarettes would mean an extra $5 million. And they're saying that this is going to stop the kids from going out and buying this stuff? This is going to have zero impact on the kids. Zero. It's hard to believe that a tiny bump in vaping taxes will have any impact on youth usage. It would take a much larger increase for that to happen. And even then, it's not guaranteed that the price will curb use since thousands of teens are already addicted to these products. The proposed vaping tax won't improve public health in a big way. It will only bring in a few extra tax dollars to the state while creating more financial burdens for Hoosiers. If the legislature wants to make a real difference on the issue, they obviously need to go a different route. What a joke. I got no more use for this guy. Well, let's move on to another state. Another joke. How about in Idaho? Apparently in Idaho, Senate Bill 1087 got voted down. Yeah. And that was what they needed to do to bring the state's minimum age to buy tobacco products in line with what the federal government says. Federal government has tobacco 21. So that's why you're seeing all of these bills across every single state. They now, in order to enforce the bills, enforce the law, well, their law has to be the same. Well, in Idaho, they decided we're not going to deal with this crap. We're not going to let the federal government tell us what to do. So we're not going to change our laws. Whatever our laws are, that's the way they're going to stay. So if you don't cross state lines and you live in Idaho, well, then apparently you can still go in and buy tobacco in 18, 19, 20-year-olds. Man shouldn't butt into anything yeah. that ain't his own affair. Great if you happen to live there and be that age. What do you think this neighboring state kids are going to do? They're going to go over there and get it. It's perfectly legal in Idaho to be able to buy them at the age of 19, age of 20. Pretty shitty how the military personnel... It's not legal for them to buy it. They can't go into the PX and buy it because they're underage. Federal law says 21, so. But here in Idaho, it's now apparently a teen vaping sanctuary. And that, you can thank that coinage, that coin term, to the American Lung Association. Because they're crying foul right now. They're complaining. They're saying that younger kids often rely on older classmates, age 18 and 19, to supply them with tobacco products. Well, since few students reach 21 while still in high school, raising the minimum age to 21 would virtually eliminate high school students from legally buying tobacco. Do you think they're not going to buy them illegally? Are you seriously that dense to think that if you create this law, everybody's going to go and be so happy to follow your law? I mean, this is the equivalent of the whole gun debate theory. Yeah, we'll just ban this gun and ban that gun and ban this gun and ban that gun. We'll just ban them all. You think the criminals give a shit about your laws and it being banned? They don't care. They'll go and they'll buy a 3D printer and print their own if they have to. Yeah, man, I'll tell you what, that dang old internet, man, you just go on there and point and click, 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 click. It's real easy, man. I'll let you read the article yourself. There'll be a link in the description below if you want to take a closer look at it. How about I've got a press release here from Cavile Brands. You know the brand that most people have never heard about? 
I didn't hear about it until I was doing PMTA research a while back and put that in the news. Apparently, they filed for their PMTA for their bitty sticks or bitty vapor sticks. Yeah, well, since they had to complete all that regulatory paperwork for their PMTA, well, you might as well use that to keep the get the regulatory requirements for all the other areas of the world, right? No point in holding out. You already did all the work. Might be some different forms you got to fill out. So you got to submit it in a different language. Who cares? Well, here's their press release. They're now going to be moving into Spain, France, Italy, Germany, Netherlands, Austria, and Czech Republic. Yeah. And this is in addition to them already selling in Australia, New Zealand, Russia, and the United Kingdom. All because they submitted to the UK and the EU to meet their regulatory requirements for vaping products. Well, in addition to them announcing that they are now going to be expanding their international operation, they're also looking forward to, and this is something I wanted to let you guys know about, even if you don't give a shit about this company, let you know about the upcoming expo that they are looking forward. It's called an international trade show. But it's kind of like an expo where you can go out and check out these different kind of products that are out there. And I personally like knowing, you know, what else is available out in the marketplace that we don't even know about. So if you're interested, you can go to this link, voxpo.vfairs.com, and you can check out the Voxpo. It's a vaping expo. And naturally, in COVID fashion, in the global pandemic, in the midst of a global pandemic, it's all online. It's all virtual. Well, being virtual isn't always a good thing. It's forcing a lot of people to work from home, especially members of parliament. Well, here we go. Estonian member of parliament joins parliamentary debate while vaping in bed and listening to music. Well, what did you expect him to do? He didn't realize it was his turn, and he didn't realize that the camera was going to automatically switch to him laying in bed, having a drag. And listening to his favorite music. Well, when you, as a younger adolescent were in a string of punk rock bands well you love music so that's what you're gonna do when you get these idiots arguing about whatever you're arguing about and bringing up these ridiculous things that politicians bring up just in order to sidetrack the conversation or to give their other esteemed members of parliament the opportunity to bring other things into a bill that don't belong in that bill well, got to keep yourself occupied and awake. So that's what he decided to do. He was laying in bed, listening to the debate, listening to some music in the background, and enjoying his vape. Much to do about nothing. If you're really interested, there's a link in the description below. You can actually go watch him chilling in bed, listening to music when the camera switches over. And this is the best thing that Yahoo News can come up with to try and tarnish vaping reputation just a little bit more. Because, you know, they have nothing better to do. How about uh, we got a real problem going on in Taiwan right now? Taiwan is targeting nicotine delivery devices and they're potentially looking to ban it altogether by the second half of this year. According to the China Post, and this is a link and you'll find it in the description below for Tobacco Reporter, the Taipei City Government Department of Health has reportedly drawn up draft amendments to the, I love the name of this bill, Tobacco Hazards Prevention Act, which have been sent to Parliament for approval. The proposed amendments prohibit the manufacture, import, selling, supply, display, and advertising of vape devices and novel tobacco products. 
Violators are going to face fines between 10000 and 50000 Taiwan dollars. And I really wish... I mean, it's nice that they put this in here. That this $10,000 Taiwan dollar translates to 351 US dollars. But you really don't know what a value of the dollar is in Taiwan unless you live in Taiwan. You know, you go to talk about some things and you're comparing prices. You can't compare apples to oranges because... An orange is worth more than an apple in some places, and in some places an apple is worth more than an orange, so it's not a true representation of how significant these fines are. However, it is bad news that there's another country potentially banning electronic nicotine delivery systems. Well, what's worse than banning something altogether? How about making the restriction of sale of that product so cumbersome that most people are going to say, I'm just going to buy a pack of 20s and call it a day. Well, why am I going to try and have to drive all the way over to go find a specialty store that's selling this stuff when every gas station, every dairy, every convenience store all around the world full of cigarettes, walls of cigarettes. Yeah. And I know in some places, they have to cover it up because you're not supposed to see it. But you can walk into the grocery store and pick up a pack. Tobacco harm reduction products, on the other hand, well, they need to be in a specialty store, and you can't sell it anywhere else. No online sales, no remote sales. Can't call them up on, uh, can't, you know, ring them up on the phone and say, hey, man, I need to send me this over, all right? You know who I am. Here's, here's my money for it, whatever. Nope. Nope. Governments all around the world right now are banning this. Look, it's either me or them. You're getting fucked one way or the other. Does not look good. Nope. However, we do have advocacy organizations that are fighting back and are saying enough of this. Enough of this. We need to stop this. You are going way too far. And we knew this was coming. When we heard that the Crown Report was released from New Zealand, and it showed that tobacco tax revenue was half of what it was the year before, we knew the regulations were coming. Because they're not going to let the revenue shortfall just drop by the wayside. That's a lot of money. they got to find a replacement for it. Well, what's even worse than that? This proposed regulation that they have going on over there is going to limit the availability of flavors to three. And if you want one of those three flavors, you're in luck. You'll be able to get it. Same place you can get a pack of cigarettes. But if you want any other flavor besides tobacco, mint, and menthol, well, you're going to have to go find a specialty vape store to buy your stuff at. And the uh, AVCA is calling out the government and their hypocrisy on this whole issue. Acknowledging vaping but failing to support it as a key factor to achieve a smoke-free nation is preposterous. There's a lot of talk about tougher rules and regulations for tobacco, but to achieve smoke-free, smokers also need to be presented with a viable, less harmful alternative, and that's vaping. Well, they keep fighting it. They keep calling the government out on their short-sighted decisions. And you can take a look at the link in the description below. However, I do want to point your attention to their website. It's avca.org.nz. They are a registered New Zealand charitable trust. And their mission is very simple. Educate, inform, advocate, and community. All of those involved are doing this work voluntarily out of the conviction that there is a way, a better way, for smokers to be rid of the beast of combustible tobacco once and for all. Quitting smoking is hard. We know, as we have all been there and have succeeded, by not quitting smoking, but by switching to using electronic liquid vaporizers, a.k.a. electronic cigarettes, instead of using combustible tobacco. (sighs) 
Take a look at their link. It'll be in the description below. Moving on. World Vape Day 2021 is coming up. And I know it's not for more. It, it's more than a month away. But it's time to get the word out. Because we need more and more people to advocate for this. I've seen so many people drop by the wayside and they're like, man, it is what it is. I'm tired of this. If we, if we all do that, you might as well kiss all this stuff goodbye. Because the people that are on the opposition to vaping are not going to quit. Bloomberg's funding all of these organizations and plastering this all over the world. He's not going to stop. He's got more than enough money, more than enough time, more than enough resources to keep on fighting for it. It's up to you to keep your right to safer nicotine products. Let's keep on vaping like our lives depend on it because they kind of do. And that's why I'm bringing this up. Vapers are encouraged to go the extra mile extra mile for World Vape Day, a celebration set to take place online for the second year running. World Vape Day is to raise awareness of electronic cigarettes as harm reduction tool for smokers. It also provides information to anyone thinking about switching to vaping and campaigns on behalf of countries that are experiencing harsh bans or restrictions. Well, I think there's quite a many, quite a number of countries right now experiencing either or both of these. Well, May 30th is World Vape Day. And not coincidentally, it falls the day before World No Tobacco Day. So now's the time to get the word out. Spread the word about vaping. I know there's plenty of you out there that have converted your whole family of smokers over to vaping. Well, if you have any friends or co-workers... Have a conversation with them about your vape. You don't need to be pushy about it. You don't need to shove it down their throats or anything. But go in with a new flavor. And I'm sure you've had a conversation about it. I'm sure they've questioned it before. Let them know how it worked for you. And how it keeps you away from deadly combustible tobacco. And go the extra mile. This year I'm going the extra mile. I was recently able to pick up a bunch of the Inic Inceptors, just like this. So I'm going to have these. I'm going to throw them into my truck because I felt bad when last time I was vape store hopping, I felt bad that there was a lady that was looking for something to get her by, to get her away from the little jewel-like devices that she picks up in the gas station. She went into a vape shop, and they didn't have anything like that. I mean, short of buying an entire kit, something like this, even if it was mouth to lung, that intimidated this older lady. So I'm going to have these in my vehicle, and if I come across somebody again like that, I'm going to say, hold on a second, I'm going to go give you one. And I'm going to hand it to her, because she was able to successfully not buy cigarettes, but she's spending all this money week after week after week after week buying these things that end up being thrown into the garbage. Let's get something where she can actually continue using something and only replace the coil that is made of metal and cotton. So if you have the means, pick up an extra kit. Pick up a clearance kit. And give it to somebody to encourage them to give up their deadly combustible tobacco habit. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to wrap it up for this week. Today is April 16th, 2021. We've got the expo coming up. There's going to be a link in the description for you. If you're interested in doing that world vape day is coming up in one month in two weeks. So you have a month to go find some smoker who's interested in giving up their habit. You don't need to, you know, force them into it. Just talk about your experience. And if you don't know anybody, make a little video of your story and post it online. Find a social media site. 
or put it here on YouTube. Put your story of how vaping was able to help you give up smoking. It's that simple. One flavorful vape is all it takes. Well, that wraps it up for today, April 16th, 2021. I want to thank you guys all for watching. I'll be back next week with another Five on Friday Vaping New Science and Advocacy Report. I hope you all have a fantastic weekend. See you next time.